marks 20 years since Isabel hit Virginia, leaving behind a huge trail of devastation. That storm has gone down in history as the worst hurricane to sweep across the Commonwealth. Well, tonight, Andrew Frieden and Ross Runner are taking a look back at that time. We've been all talking about how we remember exactly where yeah. we were when that happened. And this was a storm that uh, we remember broadcasting. I mean, we were on the air. NBC 12 yeah. was doing its best to get information out, but everybody's power was out. And even though we had some weather mm -hmm. data, um, we knew our signal wasn't being watched. We were on the radio. That was it. Yeah, no Facebook. Mm -hmm. No Facebook. Now you have the NBC 12 News app. You have the NBC 12 weather app. Mm -hmm. You can watch us live. If anything like that, heaven forbid, happens yeah. again, you know how to get the information that you need. Yeah, in the palm of your hand, exactly. you'll have the wireless yeah. capability that we have now 20 years later. So amazing. We'll be able to, we're pretty confidently broadcast live during the next storm. And there will be another oh, yeah. storm in the mm -hmm. future. Things have changed in technology and planning. And 20 years after Hurricane uh, Isabel, or Isabel moved through, uh, the city of Richmond has made some plans to make things better. And Henry Graff caught up with some emergency responders who remember the historic storm and changes that they've made to make things better the next time. It was a storm unlike most others for Central Virginia. In the overnight hours of September 18th, a Category 1 hurricane named Isabel trekking across the Commonwealth with its sights set on the Metro Richmond area. I had never seen anything like that. And I remember driving down... Chamberlain um, Avenue and just seeing trees down in every direction. And um, it just looked like somebody just grabbed up a bunch of trees and just threw them down in the streets. The current director of Richmond Public Works, Bobby Vincent, was a young engineer 20 years ago. As he saw firsthand, Richmond was extensively damaged by Isabel. The aftermath described like a war zone by so many. 73 mile per hour wind gusts bringing down thousands of trees and causing an extremely complicated process to clear main roads and reopen neighborhoods. We have experienced something, some things like that since, but Isabel was certainly a learning, a steep learning curve for us here. An idea spawned in the wake of the storm, the city's current debris management program, helping haul away branches and other items. The city added 18 large knuckle bone trucks to get that job done, but that's not where the preparedness improvements stopped. New standard operating procedures put in place to make sure all departments are on the same page. And one of the key things that stood out to me was the enormous request for resources throughout the area. Anthony McLean, now deputy director of the city's Office of Emergency Management, worked for the state during the storm. Today, he says the city is part of a 25 locality alliance, meeting monthly now to talk about needs, training, and funding. It's not a question of if, and we all, all understand it. It's a question of when. And, and during, these, during these blue skies events, we want to make sure that we are preparing. Isabel knocking out power to 365,000 in the area for days, killing two in the city and causing about $3 million in damages. Even with flooding all over the city, Richmond's flood walls built back in 1995 were not fully engaged. Some operations go unbeknown to the public, but there can be various events of minor and moderate flood stage in which we have to operate certain areas um, in, our, in our flood wall system. The flood walls here are checked regularly, even inspected by the Army Corps of Engineers. And following that storm here in the Richmond area, then President Bush declaring the entire area a disaster zone. On your side in Richmond, I'm Henry Graff, NBC 12 News.